during Kartik Brata, we were reading Upadeshamrita, then also Bhakti Loka in some articles by Shila Bhakti Thakur. So we could not continue with Bhagavatam, which we did before Kartik Brata. Now we are continuing. We are in third canto, chapter 26. You remember. Mother Devahuti. She prayed to have a child to. Kardam Rishi. Then Kardam Rishi said. I can give you a child, but in that case. I will have to go out from the house so you can decide either me or the child she became silent then after some time again she requested then kardam rishi uh, initiated her with supreme lord kapil bhagavan entered into her and also Brahma and other demigods, they were praying to the womb. And Brahma also told to Mother Devahuti, your child is not ordinary child, he's supreme lord. Then when he appeared, he appeared in a lotus posture immediately after coming out. So it was astonishing. Then Mother Devahuti, she told him, so long I was in Maya. I desire to have a child. Now when you appear, I can understand this. Our Gurudev explained, when light comes, only then we can realize that before we were in darkness. If we are always in darkness, we cannot understand we are in darkness unless there is light. So when knowledge appears, then we can understand we were in ignorance before. This is one way of seeing it. Another way, it is the humbleness of pure devotee. Kapil Bhagavan was smiling within and he thought, what Mother Devahuti is saying? She is pure heart. Because only in pure heart I can appear, not in where there are other desires. So that is not like that. Uh, that is the humbleness of pure devotee. Our Gurudev explained when one is in touch, in connection with absolute knowledge, then this humbleness is automatically there naturally. So such humbleness, our Gurudev explained, karmis, jnanis and yogis, they cannot understand. They have their ego, pride, false pride, of thinking we can get it by our own effort, bliss, and they have other desires, so they are also disturbed, they become angry, Kama Kroda Bijayate, where there is Kama, is um, desire for your own personal interest, to, ful to fulfill some of your own personal interest, either in the way of gross sense enjoyment or subtle sense enjoyment, like getting respect, that is all Kama. When Kama is, there is some obstacle to fulfillment of our Kama, then anger automatically comes. And we become bewildered and we do wrong things. And we go down, we degrade ourselves. This Kama is a product of false ego. And false ego is product of our aversion to knowledge who is Supreme Lord. So um, those Jivas who are averse to Supreme Lord, they are in the grip of Maya. They have false ego, false desire, and they fight with each other. 
for getting non-eternal things, which are all limited, so this fighting can never stop. Impossible. As long as false ego is there. Only when one comes to real ego and has only one desire to serve Krishna, then he can be peaceful and blissful. Otherwise, not. So, our Gurudev explained, though she is a lady, Devahuti, mother, but she is a pure devotee. So, yogis, gyanis, karmis, they cannot understand her nature and also she is worshipable to them. It is their, she is their object of worship. Though lady, because here this is not the point, point is dedication of Atma to Supreme Lord Paramatma, that is what counts. Then Kapil Bhagavan said, you are pure, but you are asking for conditioned souls. Because she said, I am in Maya. I had this desire, I am fully in Maya. How I can be rescued from Maya? Then Kapil Bhagavan said, you are asking for on behalf of other conditioned souls. So I will reply to you so that they can get understanding. Then Kapil Bhagavan said, mind is the cause of bondage. Mind is the cause of emancipation. Mind here does not mean material mind, but our consciousness, our attention. Soul has a consciousness. By that consciousness, this mind also is conscious, not independently. So then he explained, when mind, the consciousness of the soul, is attached to three guna, then that is bondage for the soul. And when mind is attached to nirguna, then that is liberation. Then Mother Devahuti said, I am ordinary person. I cannot understand this triguna and nirguna. It's, it's very abstract. You clearly, you say that we can understand. Then Kapil Bhagavan said, triguna means in concrete form this body. Because by Rajaguna things are created. So this body is born. By Satyaguna it is maintained for some time and by Tamaguna it is destroyed. So this body has got birth, remains for some time and it perishes. So that in concrete form, Triguna means this body. Those who are attached to this body, they are in bondage. Nirguna means that which is beyond this Triguna that is Nirguna Bhagavan, Supreme Lord. Those who are attached to Supreme Lord, they are liberated. Then again, Mother Devahuti said, we know, we see that this body is non-eternal and the body relations they are non-eternal, we see. But we become attached because we can relate with them, exchange our thoughts, we can speak, then we become attached. But Supreme Lord, in his deity form, he's only standing there. He's not speaking to us. How we can become attached to him Maybe in some rare cases he speaks to someone from DT forum, but generally not. So how we can get attachment? Then Kapil Bhagavan said, you have to associate with pure devotees, sadhu. 
he is non different from Supreme Lord, transcendental, his absolute counterpart. And he is living in this world like us. He is walking, he is talking. So if you associate with such pure devotees and become attached to them, then that attachment is automatically translated into attachment to Supreme Lord, then you can be liberated. So you have to take this Sadhu Sangha, then uh, Mother Devahuti asked who is a Sadhu, how we can know who is a real Sadhu. Then Kapil Bhagavan said there are two qualities of a Sadhu. Original quality, Swarup Lakshan, and concomitant qualities. Tatashta Lakshan means accompanying qualities. When original quality is there, then certain qualities are also attached there to it, accompanying. Then first he explained about accompanying qualities is Sadhu is very merciful, seeing all jivas in relation to Supreme Lord. He is not malicious to anyone and he sees their suffering, so he tries to alleviate their suffering, remove their suffering by prescribing devotion, because that is the cause. Aversion to Krishna is the cause of their suffering. Then they are tolerant. Why? Because they see everything is happening by the will of Krishna. They are not disbalanced. They can tolerate. And they are peaceful because they have no any other ulterior desires. They don't see anyone as their enemy. Because they see all are in relation to Supreme Lord. There is no, I am Russian, I have to hate Americans. Or I'm Indian, I have to hate Chinese, Chinese this, or no any such materialistic vision. They see we are all brothers and sisters in relation to same Father, God. So no one is enemy. This is one thing. Another thing is they don't see anyone as enemy because they know others can only be instruments in giving the fruits of my actions. They are not the cause. They are not the cause of my suffering. I did some bad activities, so I have to get certain result. That result is given by Krishna, no one else. Now in Pula, this topic came out with Vishnu Maharaj and Tapasya Maharaj about how God, Supreme Lord, Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita, he does not interfere in our relative independence of doing good or bad deeds. He never interferes. Jivas are doing and they are getting results. Krishna is only giving the results. So no one is to be blamed for my suffering. I'm getting the fruit of my own action, which is given by Krishna. It may be through some other person, he, but he's instrumental, not the cause. So if I see him as my enemy, someone is hostile to me, then that is ignorance and it will cause disturbance. And if I have hostile mentality to anyone, then my, I, I will be disbalanced. My mind will be disbalanced and I cannot concentrate on Supreme Lord. I lost awareness of Supreme Lord because I'm not seeing He's behind that result. One time, someone approached our Gurudev and said, sometimes I'm thinking I'm devotee. But at other times, I think I'm not devotee. And others also sometimes they say I'm devotee, 
and at other times they they say I'm not a devotee. So you please tell me what is true. Then Gurudev said, if at any time you become disbalanced, disturbed, uncontrolled, you are not a devotee. Of course, here it means pure devotee. Because pure devotee has got no any ulterior desire for getting respect, for getting this for anything. His desire is only to serve Krishna. So how he can be disbalanced at any time since he has no any other desire? So there can be no block to his desire. And also he seeing everything is happening by the will of Supreme Lord, who is all good. This for my own good. So he's never disbalanced. But if we have so many other arterial desires, then we become disbalanced. Some event will happen, then we become disbalanced. So we have to purify. So pure devotees, they are not disbalanced, they are peaceful, they are tolerant, they are merciful, they don't see anyone as their enemy, they are not revengeful, and other qualities he mentioned. And then he said about the original quality of a sadhu, that is, he has exclusive one-pointed devotion to Krishna. That is why he, he can have all these other qualities. Otherwise, it is impossible. And there Kapil Bhagavan said he gave up Varna Ashram duties for the sake of serving me. And it means he is not in false ego. I'm Kshatriya, I'm Brahmin, I'm this Vaisha, Shudra, um, Sanyasi, all this. These are for Varna Ashram Dharma identities. But he knows I'm eternal servant of Krishna. My only duty is to serve him. So pure devotee gave up following Varna and Dharma because he is fully engaged in his own Swadharma, means real Dharma, which is eternal service of Krishna. And he is speaking Harikata only for the satisfaction of Supreme Lord, not for impressing others or for getting money from others or ladies all this is not there. His only target is satisfaction of Krishna, his pure devotee. Then that will have effect on the soul. And uh, he sometimes, Kapil Bhagavan said, he sometimes playing the pastime of being sick, ill, but he is not feeling any suffering because of that. Because his mind is fully absorbed in me. Here mind means that soul's mind, fully absorbed. So he's always on transcendental platform. So he is not feeling any pain and pleasure of this body. Our Guru Dev explained, like if I am on aircraft in the air and on the ground there is earthquake. Will that affect me in the aircraft? No. There is no disturbance for me. I mean aircraft. Earthquake is creating disturbance here. Like that, those who are on transcendental platform, their sorrow, they cannot be disturbed by any happening in this material body. So they are not feeling any pain, suffering, though their body may be sick or like this. Their remembrance of Krishna is always there. So such pure devotees, Mother Deva Huti, you have to take association. And Rupa Goswami explained how one has to take their association, that you will get proper 
result, you have to give to Sadhu what he requires. Gift him what he requires. Cloth or money or like this, whatever is required for his service of Krishna, you have to give to him and also what Sadhu offers to you as prasad. Some articles or something he will give you or return what you gave him, but then it will be prasad offered to Krishna that you have to accept. You should not reject what Sadhu offers to you. You should not reject. That is his mercy. Then you have to openly speak your heart to Sadhu. You should not hide from him or hesitate or be shy or uh, like this. If you open your heart to Sadhu, generally we, we have experience in this world. If we open heart to someone, then that person may misuse that. He may laugh at us or criticize us or speak about us or something. So generally we don't want to speak our heart sincerely to anyone because that possibility is there. But Sadhu has no any such desire to harm us. So we should not hesitate to speak to him that this is happening with me. I'm having this difficulty in my bhajan. This is happening. If we open our heart to Sadhu, then he will also open his heart to us. Then we have to hear what he is saying about the secret secrecy of bhajan. Bhajan is secret thing. No one in this world knows what is bhajan. No any worldly person knows what is bhajan, what is worship of Krishna. So if we open with surrender to sadhu, then he will also open. He will tell us why we are suffering. Where is our mistake in bhajan? How we should do it? And he will speak about that bliss one gets if he serves Krishna and what are the teachings of scriptures, what teachings we are getting from examples from scriptures and also some practical examples they will tell us. Then that will help us to worship Krishna. And also we have to offer prasad to sadhu. We have to collect, cook and offer to Bhagavan and then that prasad we should give to sadhu and also we should accept prasad from sadhu. If we associate with sadhu, pure devotee, in these six ways, then we will become attached to him. And that attachment automatically means attachment to Supreme Lord because he's whole life is meant only for the service of Krishna and by getting attachment to Supreme Lord, we get detachment from non-eternal things. But if we do this type of six-fold loving association with materialistic people, then we will become attached there and we will be in Maya, we will be in suffering. So we have to divert our attachment to Supreme Lord and Sadhu, his devotee, then we can be rescued from Maya. Kapil Bhagavan said this is the process, this is the way. So attachment to Sadhu means following his mind. He's always thinking how to serve Supreme Lord and he's always thinking. So that that thinking, that activities we have to imbibe from sadhus. We have to become devotees of Krishna. Then that, that can rescue us from Maya. Then Kapil Bhagavan also analytically, he, that is Shankya Gyan, 
he explained about this material creation, about the elements and all this. So this we were hearing before Kartik about five material elements, earth, water, fire, air, sky, and their properties, form, uh, touch, and how this is all evolving in creation. The form of fire is appreciated by its effect, or taste of water, a smell of earth. We heard fire is appreciated by its light and by its ability to cook, to digest, to destroy cold, to evaporate and to give rise to hunger thirst, eating and drinking. And then I don't know if we already read this verse. Rupa matrat vikurvanat teja sodaiva choditat rasa matram abhut tasmat ambo jihva rasa graha. By the interaction of fire and the visual sensation, the subtle element taste evolves under a superior arrangement. From taste, water is produced and the tongue, which perceives taste, is also manifested. Kashayo madura stiktah Katamla iti naikada bhauti kanam vikarena rasa eko vibhidyate. Although originally one, taste becomes manifold as astringent, sweet, bitter, pungent, sour, and salty due to contact with other substances. Six tastes. Kledanam, pindanam, triptih, prana, napya, ya, nondanam, tapa, pa, nodo, buyastvam, ambhaso, vritayastvaima. The characteristics of water are exhibited by its moistening under substances, coagulating various mixtures, causing satisfaction, maintaining life, softening things, driving away heat, incessantly supplying itself to reservoirs of water, and refreshing by slacking thirst. Rasa matra dvikurvanat ambhaso deva choditat Ganda matram abu tasmat pritvi granas tu ganda gah. Due to the interaction of water with the taste perception, the subtle element odor evolves under superior arrangement. Means this superior arrangement means supreme lord. This, by his will, this creation is going on. Hence, the earth and the olfactory sense by which we can variously experience the aroma of the earth become manifest. It is not automatically some scientists or Buddhists like this, they think this creation is automatically happening. There is no any creator, but that is incorrect. Even Gajendra said, by seeing how everything is arranged in this world, by this also indirectly I can understand there is some creator, some intelligence behind this. Otherwise it is impossible like this. So scientists and Buddhists, they are, according to Swami Maharaj and according to Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, they are fools. Muras, fools, because they don't believe 
in creator behind all this creation. Creator is there, but we are not able to directly perceive because we are in Maya. Those who have no Sukriti, they cannot have faith in Supreme Lord. And no any amount of argument or logic or direct perception or anything will help that they can believe in Supreme Lord. It's impossible. That is why we have to avoid them. Not to argue unnecessarily because wasting time, useless. Only those who have Sukriti gathered knowingly, unknowingly, they are able to have. Mahabharata is Smriti Shastra, written by Vyasadeva, his avatar, Shaktivesh avatar. So what he's saying is true. There he wrote Mahaprasade Gobinde. Namo Brahmani Vaishnave. Svalpa Punya Batam Rajan Bishwa Shunai Bajayate. O King, one, in one's heart, faith will not take birth. Vishwa Vishwa Shunaiva Jayate cannot take birth, cannot appear in this Mahaprasad, food offered to Bhagavan, is transcendental, it's not material. Looks like material, but it is not. Mahaprasade Govinde means Supreme Lord, his deity form. Looks like matter, but it is not. He is Supreme Lord. Or Supreme Lord, when he appears as avatar, they, Kangsa and others, they think he is some ordinary being, but he is not. By the effect, there is difference. Namo Brahmani, the name of Supreme Lord, of Brahma, means Shabda Brahma. It's not ordinary sound. It looks like, or it, you hear it like some ordinary sound, but it is not. Namo Brahmani, Vaishnava. Vaishnava looks like ordinary man, but he is not. He is transcendental. But we are unable to perceive they are different, they are transcendental, unless we have enough Sukriti. If someone has very little Sukriti, Svalpa Punya. Svalpa Punya. Al Alpa means, in Bengali, Alpa means little, in Sanskrit, Alpa. Alpa Punya, he cannot have faith. So you should not waste your time by arguing with them, they cannot accept. If they are, if some souls are interested to hear, to know, then you can tell. But if you see they are not interested and they are only arguing, then no need to. Then, uh, they can, those who have Sukriti, they can, like Gajendra, indirectly they can see there must be some creator. And they will also believe in the statement of pure devotees that there is some Supreme Person. They can believe in Vedic scriptures or other scriptures according to capacity they are given, like Quran, Bible, they are speaking about God according to eligibility of people, but they are also expressing that God, the reality of God, the Creator. So they can see, and those who are doing bhajan, directly serving Supreme Lord, and they, they purify their heart, they can directly see Supreme Person, who is the creator of innumerable universes, not only this one small Earth, so many other planetary systems, 
upper and lower three worlds are there. And this is only one universe, one Brahmanda, of one Brahma, Brahmanda. One egg like of Brahma. There are innumerable Brahmandas. And our Brahmanda, our Brahma has four heads. Because that is enough for the size of this, in this universe. But there are other Brahmas, they have eight heads, 16 heads, 32 heads, 64, like a thousand heads. Because that Brahmanda is so big, they need many heads to administrate. And there are innumerable and all are created by Supreme Lord in his forum as Mahavishnu, who is expansion of Mahashankarshan, who is expansion of Balade Prabhu, who is expansion of Krishna. Krishna is Sarva Karana Karanam, cause of all causes, prime cause of all causes. So Krishna is the original creator, from him everything comes. We also come from him. We are his energy also. But we are in illusion. So if we gather enough Sukriti, then we can have faith in the name of Supreme Lord, in his remnants of his food. Uh, his devotees and his deity form, then if we worship, then that will purify our heart, then we can directly perceive all avatars of Supreme Lord. We cannot know all avatars, but we will know there are innumerable avatars. They have different lilas in this world, like Vyasadeva. He saw in his samadhi all this. In purified heart, he saw Many avatars, they are unlimited, but he described only some. And how this material world is created, how it is maintained, how it is destroyed, why jivas are conditioned about the law of karma, and that there is also Nitya Lila, there are transcendental realms, planets, they are never destroyed. Their Nitalila is going on. They are also unlimited. Unlimited varieties and unlimited forums of Supreme Lord, unlimited servitors in different ways. Lila, all this he saw. We also have to see. That is the, we have to achieve this. It is not that only we will remain on theoretical knowledge, but we have to realize. We have to hear from bona fide sources, that is Sadhu and Shastra, and then we have to practice devotion, Bhakti Yoga, like Vyasadeva did, then in purified heart, he saw all Lila. Shukadev Goswami also realized all Guru Parampara charges, they realized souls. Otherwise, you cannot be Guru. At least some realization he must have. There are different levels of realization, Kanishta, Madhya Mutam. But our Gurudev said, even if someone is not Uttamadikari and his guru, but there will be effect. Some effect will be there because some realization he has. And also when you will pray in Jayadvani for the grace of Supreme Lord and his devotees, then it is not that you will pray only for the grace of your Guru. You will pray the grace of his Guru and his Guru. They are all pure devotees. 
So you will get that grace because Guru Parampara is right. If you are sincere in praying the grace of Guru Parampara, then you will get devotional strength, devotion you will get. So he must be connected to bona fide Sampradaya. And even if he is practitioner, that will not harm you uh, because of this, because of bona fide Guru Parampara. But if he deviates from practice, then one has to uh, reject and take someone who is realized soul or sincerely practicing for getting realization. Or he has some realization, not full, but he's practicing sincerely, then you should not reject him. And you should pray for the grace of all Guru Parampara Charges. And by your sincere bhajan also, you will get everything and your Guru may also improve. Such examples are there. By disciples, sincere bhajan, Guru may also improve. So all this is there. So here it says, these things are happening. How material elements, they are evolving and this, their properties, it is under superior arrangement. It is not coincidentally and automatically and not under any kind of control. It's just going on. No, that is not correct. They can understand, scientists, that there are some laws, but even th those laws they cannot fully understand. And the Buddhists, they are also understanding that there are some laws of karma, all this they can understand. But they are unable to believe that there is a controller, there is creator, one who makes these laws and who knows them all. This they, they are unable to get. Belief. Karambha puti saurabhya shanto gramladi bih pritak Dravya, Vayava, Vaishamyat, Ganda, Eko, Vibhi, Dyate. Odor, although one, becomes many as mixed, offensive, fragrant, mild, strong, acidic, and so on, according to the proportion of associated substances. Here, Sain Maharaj is giving. Mixed smell is sometimes perceived in foodstuffs prepared from various ingredients, such as vegetables mixed with different kinds of spices and asafetida or hink. Asafetida. Bad odors are perceived in filthy places. Good smells are perceived from camphor, menthol, and similar other products. Pungent smells are perceived from garlic and onions, and acidic smells are perceived from turmeric and similar sour substances. You should not too quickly add curcuma, turmeric, then it will take more time to cook other things because it is sour. Or if you put tomato, also it will prolong. So better later on you put. The original aroma is the odor emanating from the earth. And when it is mixed with different substances, this odor appears in different ways. If someone is not taking bath, then that will happen. In filthy places, then bad smell will come. So Satyaguna, Rajaguna, Tamaguna are there. We are under influence. Bhavanam, Brahmanam, Stanam, Dharanam, Sadvisheshanam, Sarva Sattva, Gunod, Bheda, Priti Vibriti Lakshanam. The characteristics of the functions of earth can be perceived by modeling forms of the Supreme Brahman, by constructing places of residence, by preparing pots to contain water, 
etc. In other words, the earth is the place of sustenance for all elements. Here in common, another feature of the earth, especially mentioned here, is that earth can manifest different forms of the Supreme Personality of God. He will appear in that. And that will not be earth anymore. It will be supreme world. Brahmanah stanam, Brahm. It's short, eh? not four-headed Brahma, Brahm. Stanam. So earth can be used. Nabho guna visheshortho yasya tat chrotra muchate vayar guna visheshortho yasya tat sparshana vidu. The sense whose object of perception is sound is called the auditory sense. And that whose object of perception is touch is called the tactile sense, air and skin. Air is auditory. Tejo guna visheshortho yasya tat chakshuruchate ambo guna visheshortho yasya tat rasanam vidu bhumer guna visheshortho yasya sa grana uchate. The sense whose object of perception is form, the distinctive characteristic of fire is the sense of sight, means I. The sense whose object of perception is taste, the distinctive characteristic of water is known as the sense of taste, tongue. Finally, the sense whose object of perception is odor the distinctive characteristic of earth is called the sense of smell. That is nose. All these topics you will find also in Upanishads, the philosophical, the final portion of the Vedas, four Vedas, for Vedas, mostly they are concerned with karma kanda, rituals like this. That is also meant for gradual purification. Then in Upanishad, you will find all these descriptions that there, there it is more uh, emphasis is given on this, what is matter and how it is functioning and what is spirit, but there only Brahman is there, Brahma. No any, not any much uh, name of Supreme Lord and his Lila, but Brahm, transcendental and what are his certain qualities, it is there, it is not so clear and in Vedanta Sutra it is explained because it is explained in Upanishads, but after writing all those scriptures, Vyasadeva was not satisfied. Then he asked Narad, Narad said, this is, you did not clearly describe about Supreme Lord and devotion to him, you have to do this. Then you can get eternal bliss. Then he wrote Bhagavatam and he got eternal bliss. So all the topics of transcendental knowledge about Supreme Lord, his Lila and about creation, everything, everything is there in Bhagavatam, totally everything. If you only read Bhagavatam, you will get everything. That is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Bhagavad Sharavan, you have to hear Bhagavatam. He particularized, you have to hear Bhagavatam. Our Gurudev also told, there is no time in Kali Yuga, life is short, no need to study all scriptures. Only you read Bhagavatam under the guidance of realized soul, you will get everything. There is no time. So all topics you will find here. And more is manifested about Nam Rup Gun Lila of Brahman. Lila and, and 
on this and about the glories of devotees, everything is very clearly manifested in Bhagavatam. But about the Radharani, it is only indirectly mentioned. Highest Krishna Prem. Indirectly only mentioned. But in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is directly, elaborately explained about the Radharani. So that is why Chaitanya Charitamrita is the highest scripture. Also, Basu Gosh, he sang that song, Jodi Gorna Hoito, Kemune Jodi Gorna Hoito, Kemune Kemune Doritam De. Jodi Gorna Hoito, Tobeki Hoito. that one song is there, there, if Mahaprabhu did not come, who will know the glories of Radharani? Radhara Mohima, who can know? No one can know. So, we are lucky to be born in this Kali Yuga where Krishna appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he sang the glories of Radharani openly. So we can get that highest Krishna Prem by His grace. And all other topics we can get from Srimad Bhagavatam. All what is necessary for us to know about Namrup Gun Lila of Supreme Lord. And the highest pastimes are those of Brindaban. The highest devotee is Radharani. That was openly given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to all. No discrimination because he is most merciful form of Supreme Lord. So we have to take this oppor golden opportunity, submit. Before I said the sadhu, we have to take shelter of sadhu associated with sadhu, but in Kali Yuga it is very difficult to find bona fide sadhu. Many cheaters, fake all this, so seeing this sad plight of the jivas, Supreme Lord himself came in the form of sadhu or guru, that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, if we accept his order, his instruction, then we will get everything. There is no fear. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed us to chant Mahamantra without tenfold offenses, then we can get highest Krishna Param. If you follow this order of Mahaprabhu, then we will get highest thing possible. Highest Krishna Prem. Tomorrow we will hear about Balade Bidevushan and Ganga Mata Gosamini. They are also personal associates of Mahaprabhu. We will hear tomorrow.